Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. I have been making a collage. Um, just using book pages and some jelly prints. I actually, I put it in top back of a, I used a book page to put the collage on top of. This is a little, um, I just made a little um, swatch book to go with it. Um, just so that I knew what I'd used with it. So it's just a mixture of jelly prints and book pages. Although I had put black jelly print paint on back on top of that. These are out of a Pepin Tapestry book. And this is the scrapbook paper I made in one of the videos. And this is another jelly print. So it just means that I've got it to refer to um, when I'm, you know, going to use it. If I, I if I use it for something, um, I quite like this on its own. I think it's, um, I think it would make a nice picture in itself actually. But it's also would, it's quite flexible. It's a bit stiff. You couldn't use it as wrapping paper like if you backed it. Um, but you could use it, you know, to make a mount for greeting cards. You could use it to make tags. You could obviously use it in your junk journals, um, art journals. It's got a lot of potential. So I'm going to give it a go with another one. I've got my um, art room in a bit of a mess and I can't find all my scrapbook papers that I made. So I thought, right. Well, we'll go for a red and green theme then. So I have this out of a microwave cookbook. I have this out of an old cookbook. Now, it's actually a picture out of it, a full picture page. I have done some stamping on top and a little bit of stenciling with the inks. Um, I really like that effect in it and I actually feel that it did help provide some unity throughout it as well. So... These are out of a Pepin Art Nouveau M book. And this is the red and green scrapbook paper that I made. Now, this is very Christmassy looking, but it will be getting toned down a lot. Now, for this, I normally tear papers, but for this, I actually used a ruler to tear them because I quite liked the structured look that it gave me. So I'm going to use that again. It's hard just starting, by the way. Starting's the hard part. <laughs> I am just going to cut a bit of this as a starting point. There we go. I also have some of my jelly prints actually that I haven't looked out yet. I'm quite happy with this just now so I'm going to stick this down using the matte medium and I mean you could use other glues I just like matte medium I use it for everything the thing I will say though is when you go to stick them down like you could take a photograph or um I just try and be really careful when I take them out and sometimes when I put them back down the little changes that occur are could be a good thing. Um, you just you just have to. Um, I like the intuitive aspect of it. Try and do the kind of underneath ones first, though, out at the edges. But don't do them all the way. Like here, I've just put that there, and it's just to give me. There we go. Because then, if there was something that went underneath that, then I can put it back underneath it. So I've stuck them down. They're definitely not in the same order they started. Um, there's also some bits where they stick up. But what I do is I will go around with matte medium later on. If you're struggling with the paint going on to the glossy papers, um, you can just put a layer of matte medium over the top. And it will give you a better surface to paint on. Um, I'm just going to go with this just now because I like it when it goes under the nooks and corners. 
corners and stuff and then I'll just repair it as it's needed if that makes sense so I'm just going to lightly gesso um, you can use thin white acrylic paint just use it very sparingly because the white acrylic paint is a bit more opaque so when the gesso dries it does tend to be lighter than it starts it's just finding that balance between keeping your brush wet enough but not too wet now I like to push these right back because I'll build more layers on them so that's our kind of base layer that we can then build so on you can see here that some parts are a lot more muted than others and that's just because as I've built it up I've used less and less gesso the gesso doesn't like the glossy paper so it's good to put some matte medium on it so it doesn't end up like this here it's a bit um, scratchy looking, um, but just as I got more and more to the top, I just kept the the gesso layers very thin. I didn't want to completely leave them stand alone out. I did want it to um, even the top layer to look like it's it's kind of peeking out. You do get the brush marks. Um, I mean, maybe a different brush would help with that. I don't mind the brush marks, especially at this stage. So I think the collage pieces, especially when you're using, you've already chosen them and you've kind of got a few pieces that you're, you're sticking to. It's almost like your paint palette. It's almost like this is, you know, the colours I've chosen. And then with the stenciling, I just like to add in the stenciling because I just feel it, you know, because they're there, they're here. It just adds just that little bit more unity to it. So I've used this one and I've used this part here, the stripy part of this one. And there's just wee bits where it's very white that I'm just going to put in a couple of wee brush strokes nothing more than that and I will just use I'm tempted to go for a red colour because we've got red going on but there's actually a lot there probably more of the yellow colour because out of them all there's only flashes of yellow so I think I'll maybe just do like here I did the blue because it was only flashes of the blue So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to overthink about the colour of yellow either because we are going to be muting it back. A probably more natural yellow will blend in better. But it's really just a wee couple of wee... I put too much yellow in that brush to start with. Where are you? I'll put you here. Yeah. This is basically, it's like a little highlight you're putting on. And again, I'm just choosing my wee spot, but it's going to just fade out from. Now, this is probably too big to be fair. Oh, it's okay. I think a more vibrant yellow would have, a, a less vibrant yellow would have been better, but be fine. And that's quite vibrant yellow that was in the, the food bowls. I'm going to do it a bit diagonal here. There. Now, if we don't look at that part there, they are very subtle. Just did too much there. I might try and see what I can do here, actually. See if I can blend it a bit more. No, I just made a much bigger. That'll be a bit where we put a strategic bit of collage, I think. Anyway, so 
Now I'm going to put down some more. I'm going to choose a, I'm going to choose a square of this. A squarish. Squarish. And the, this area here is quite dark and this area up here is quite dark. This is quite a light piece. So, but then it's right there. It's right there too. I might even do it like this, actually. Yeah. Right, I'm going to cut that down some more. So this time I will do, I will stick it down as a glue. It was just with the base layer, I was trying to be a little bit uh, more give myself opportunity for change because you're kind of building up the colours and the shapes I wonder if that would be better that way actually no it did work that way it did work yeah So I'm going to go one, two, three. So I'm going to add one more bit. And I might do a long. There. Right. I'm going to put a bit of gesso on these. Let's get rid of the yellow paint. So a lovely lady suggested using baby wipes to help blend the gesso. My goodness, actually, that is extremely helpful. I'm impressed. Now I think there's the reds. Or maybe the yellows actually. Will we go with the yellows? I'm always drying my paint brush off by the way on my paint towel, just so you know. That needs a wee bit more on it. Right, with this one, I was thinking about having a strip with the frame Where's the gold lady?
I'm actually going to put a bit of gesso back on some areas, especially around the outsides, because I feel like there isn't enough blurring. It's just a bit a bit structured There, that's better. I like it. Right, I'm going to get out the watercolours. Which I treated myself to some new ones. Not new watercolours, new brushes. 12 for £7 in the range. And I think they're pretty decent. I wouldn't say they're masterpiece level. Okay, so I'm just going to add some shadows. Just using a quite a neutral colour, a sort of dark brown umber. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to I need to use a little skinny brush. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm actually just trying to line. But I find it easier to do it this way than the other way. I'm just trying to line the edge of the paper. Which actually, with collage, it really helps you. It's not as easy to blur it out with the wee one. You could use acrylics for this. I'm not using the watercolours in the way they're designed for. I'm really using them just to try and build some um, you know, like dimension, I suppose the word is, to the, the collage. I prefer to use a towel or book pages to mop up my water when I'm doing this painting but actually, see because it's quite fine, it's actually quite a hard thing to use a book page or a towel for. Yeah, I quite like that. I'm going to do this one now. And I'm not necessarily doing all the same sides, you know, where all the shadows are at the left. Because these, well, you want to give the illusion of these being at all different heights and to provide depth. This is one of the reasons I love abstract over realism. Because you do what feels right to you, not what the scene tells you to do. So you just choose places that feel good to you. Don't, don't try and do what you think you should do. Do what you think what just feels right. This wee bit here just takes a bit of time just deciding where you want to put your shadows. 
for Disco Wild. You could go around every edge if you wanted. So I would say that's the hard part done because you've had to be quite sort of careful and detailed. And so now it's just about, there's some areas you might want to go over and just make a bit darker that you've already darkened. So what I'm doing now is the areas I want to emphasise a wee bit more, I'm just using the bigger paintbrush for. Okay, I think that will do with the shadows just now because it's one of those things that um, well, you could spend a very long time doing. So, because we're using the green, the red and the yellow, I'm just going to just add maybe the areas where I've not really overly shadowed. In fact, not even, just anywhere. I just added wee flashes of these colours too, but I'm not using anything that's too vibrant. Um, this is yellow ochre, and it's just going to be a one layer. I'm going to use olive green because... I find olive green is very, it's, it's a good neutral green shade. Might go all the way along there with this one. That's enough of the green. Right, I'm never keen in the red watercolour um, colours. I just feel... They're quite childish ones, and these ones, they're just, the burnt sienna is probably the best one, but <sighs> you know, I'm going to use the cadmium scarlet, the orangey red one. I'll do it somewhere inconspicuous. Um, here. No, there's quite a lot of warm red right there. Let's try it up here. Here. No. It's quite vibrant, isn't it? There you have it. Two collages put onto unwanted and neglected book paper, which is of a very fine quality because glossy book pages, I've used watercolours on that, I've used matte medium, I've put a few layers on and they're very sturdy. And see, because it's book pages that I've used, because even the jelly prints that I used, were mostly on book pages. I think that was printed paper. But everything else was book pages. It's not too thick. It's fairly flat. But to be fair, I think I use a bat medium this one a lot better than that one. So I'm really happy with them. I still prefer this one. And I think the reason I prefer this one is that it's sort of patterned papers that wear the highlight aren't too intricate whereas I think here because these are the Art Nouveau they're quite kind of whimsical and intricate patterns so obviously when there's a lot going on they don't stand out the same whereas I feel that these did and I also feel that using the frame with the corners 
help define areas and I tried to do that the same with this one but it wasn't as strong a frame so um but then they both give off different things this is excellent as a background and I think this could stand alone as a picture in itself but you could use these for so many different purposes you could use these as a journal cover you could use these to embellish further by adding like a theme like butterflies or labels or you know anything at all just a theme that you like cupcakes everybody likes them um you could use these to mount as mounts for cards to put your kind of you know like your what is it they call it sentiments on yes on greeting card um there's lots of uses so um my purpose for making them though is for junk journals and you know these will be great to create tags with and journaling spots and folios anything at all um but i do think that adding in I know a lot of people make collage master boards, but I do think adding in, just taking that extra time and adding in some of the shadows and the light does make a difference and it really does bring it more to life. And what I've done is I've kept my little swatches just because it feels good. <laughs> I like it. It fits in with the junk journal theme where we like to keep wee bits and pieces. So, but it does mean that I can say, oh, that's the papers I used in this. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you soon and take care.